viewers how are you doing today today is a big day because this is class number 1 of our mobile app development classes we will be starting with mit app inventor and first we will explore mit app inventor and how to use it so this is the home page of mit app inventor and i will be giving the link to this in the video description if you just google mit app inventor you will be taken to this website and if i go to resources and click on get started i can look at the setup instructions one of these have to be completed to test your app because you will be making your app and you need to test whether it works on your mobile or not so you have these four options the first option is the most recommended option and that is that you get their companion app from google play store or the app store incidentally i would recommend that although they claim that MIT app inventor does work with iPhones I still feel that there are a few issues so kindly get hold of an android device to test your mobile apps okay the advantage of this first option of the companion app is that while you're building your project on your computer it will be instantly transferred via wifi to your device so you can test it in real time so this is a good advantage now this option 2 is for people with chromebooks the third option is when you do not have any device so for these you can follow these instructions in this case you will have to download an emulator an emulator is, is something that copies a mobile and it will work on your computer or laptop so this is a good idea for people who do not have any device at the moment i would recommend that before publishing your app to the play store it's best to test it on a real device and if you do not have any wifi so obviously you cannot use this recommended approach of the companion app then you can use this usb wire to connect your mobile to your laptop or computer and then test your app so they have given you four options and they have tried to cover almost all situations okay i will be following option 1 the recommended approach in which we can test our app real time on our device using wifi and i have already installed the mit app inventor companion app from the google play store so let's begin creating our first app and we will be exploring the interface of mit app inventor while making this simple app since i have used mit app inventor before it has not asked me to sign in because i'm already logged in but if you're using mit app inventor for the first time you need to log in using a gmail account the reason for this is that all your progress all your projects will be saved on that account and you also have to accept the terms of service of mit app inventor and there's nothing complicated about it so just accept the terms of service and then you will be allowed to create your apps so go to create apps as you can see that there are some tutorials already available and you can also explore them after this class I will be going to start a blank project. We will be making a simple app in which we will have two buttons that play animal sounds. And I will be naming it Animals. And this is the main interface of MIT App Inventor, very important. So listen carefully. This is the designer view of the MIT App Inventor and this is the palette section with all the components. and these are similar to sprites okay but slightly different and you will be learning while we will be making our app this is the viewer this is your mobile screen and how it will look when you drag a component from the palette to your viewer you can see that it becomes a part of your components that is a part of your app and screen 1 means the first screen you can have multiple screens in your app and at this moment we are working on screen 1 and as you can see we can add multiple screens if we want right now we are making only a one screen app so we just added a button to it and let's rename it you can see that we have a rename button here so i'm going to rename it elephant so this will have an elephant face on it let's drag another button from here and rename this button lion So now we have two buttons on our screen elephant and lion. Now we want these buttons to come in the middle of the screen and not towards the left side. This is where if you go down on your palette this is where layout comes along. Now layout 
is the way the user interface components, the user interface components from here are arranged on the screen. So I want them to be arranged in a vertical arrangement. So I just drag this vertical arrangement. Now I want this vertical arrangement to take the full width of the screen. If you look at the right hand side of the components, you have these properties here and every component will have its properties. So this vertical arrangement will have its properties here and I can tell it that take up the full width of the screen. So I can say fill parent. Now parent is screen one, that is the topmost part, okay? So these are all children of screen one. Remember this, this is how mobile apps are designed in other programming languages too, that you have this parent-child relationship between different components. So screen one is the parent, and these are all children of screen one, that is they come under screen one. Now I'm telling vertical arrangement that it should fill the parent. So as you can see, now it's filling the parent. You can instantly see it in your viewer that the change has taken place. Now I want these elephant and lion buttons to go inside this vertical arrangement. So I just drag it and put it here. And I drag the second button and put it here too. So now they are both inside it. And as you can see, now they have become children of vertical arrangement. I can set vertical arrangement that it should be in the center. So now you can see that it looks nice. Now we want some animal faces to come on these buttons. So how to go about that? I already got these cute images of animal faces from freepick.com. So you can easily get them from the internet or draw them yourself. So I'm just going to get them from here. Lion face. And I will upload the second file, which is the elephant face. Now I will choose line from here. Then I will go to properties. As you can see that you can do a lot of things in the properties here. You can make it enabled or disabled. That means the button cannot be clicked or you can make it invisible too by unchecking visible. So now that button is gone. So I want to put the image of a lion on that button. So I will go to image here, this, and I will say lion face. And now you can see that this cute lion face is coming here. Now I don't want this text for button one to show here. So I will just go here and just delete it from here. And I will do the same thing for the elephant button. I've already uploaded elephant face here in the media. You can also upload it from here, but I uploaded it in the media at the same time because I've already uploaded it. So I just need to choose it from here, the elephant face, and I just click OK. And I have it here too. I will remove this text from here. And now this is ready. Looking cute, but where is the code? Now, this is the code view. Just like in Scratch, you had this place where you put the blocks. So you have the blocks here and you drag and drop the blocks on this viewer here. We will be exploring these in the future classes. Right now, we just need some button controls. That is when a button is clicked. So just drag when lion button is clicked, do something. And similarly, in the elephant, we have the same thing. So the code is in place. Now we need to play the sound. So let's go back to designer. And now we're going to talk about some invisible components. What are invisible components or the hidden components? The user interface components are the ones that people can see on your screen. What are the hidden components here that people cannot see? Those are the sounds, the lion sound and the elephant sound. So we will go to media and we need to put two sounds here. So I just dragged and dropped them on the viewer. And now they are part of my app's components. So this is sound one. I'm going to name it elephant sound. And this is sound two. And I'm going to name it lion sound. Make sure to name them appropriately because this way your code will be more readable and you will not make mistakes. Now I need more media here. So I will be uploading sounds here. Elephant sound. The lion roar sound. I got them from Sound Bible. I will be giving the link to that in the video description too. I have uploaded the sounds. I have these elephant sound and the lion sound, okay? But they are not linked to each other. So this elephant sound, if you look at the properties, it is asking for a source. So we can set the source to 
lfn.mp3 and click OK. And the lion sound, choose the lion roar, click OK. Now they have been associated to proper mp3 files. And now just simply go to blocks and you can see that we have these sounds here. Click on lion sound. You have all these blocks here. We just need this call lion sound dot play. As you can see, it's showing you help text to place the sound specified by the source property. So we have set the source property so it will play the line sound. And similarly for the elephant sound, just drag and drop. So this is such a simple code and you can make more buttons and associate the sounds with them and just call them when the button is clicked. Simple, isn't it? So just let's go to designer and this code is complete. We have two buttons in a vertical arrangement and we have two sounds. Buttons are clicked, those sounds will be played and our very simple app is complete. It has non-visible components, sounds, and these are the visible components, the buttons with these images. Okay, I hope you understood this tutorial. You can see how fun it was and how easy it was to create it. And this is a working app that will actually work on your mobile. So we can test it by going to connect. And again, depending upon your situation, you can either use the app inventor companion and you can use either the emulator if you do not have a device. And if you do not have Wi-Fi, but you do have a device, you can use the USB option. So I will be using the AI companion. And as you can see that when I clicked on it, it's saying connect to companion. So I will launch the companion app on my own device. And then the companion app will ask for a QR code, which we have available here. And we just need to point our real Android device to this QR code and our app will start working on our mobile. So now I'm going to show the app actually working on the real device. Okay, so I've opened up MIT App Inventor. And I will be just scanning the QR code and I've pointed towards my laptop screen. The app is being uploaded to my mobile and now it's working. So let's play it. It's working perfectly fine. Now you have seen an app that I created right in front of your eyes and that you can easily create yourself working on a real Android device. Wasn't it amazing? These apps can be easily published to the Google Play Store. So keep on watching my classes and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly do so and do share my video with your friends and family and spread the word. My classes, coding, mobile app development, mental math, they're all 100% free. So what are you waiting for? Do subscribe. Thank you for watching this class. In the next class, I will be teaching you some more interesting things about MIT App Inventor. Have a good day and goodbye.